Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to another Sunday Stories with Brother Sandy. Today is the last day of Ramadan, the last day of fasting, and you know what that means. That means tomorrow is Eid, the Eid celebration, Eid al-Fitr, when we celebrate the breaking of the fast after a month of fasting and reading the Quran and doing good deeds and spending time in the masjid. I pray that it's been a very meaningful uh, experience for all of you and that Allah accepts your fasting, your good deeds, your prayers, your sadaqah, um, and everything that you've been doing this Ramadan to observe this holy month, inshallah. For our final installment of our Sunday Night Story series, we'll be reading from this book, Ramadan Bedtime Stories, 30 Stories for 30 Nights. We're going to be reading Chapter 30, the last story of the book, and appropriately enough, it is called The Blessed Eid. Today was the 29th day of Ramadan. Everyone in the house was waiting for the iftar when Miriam wailed with tears shining in her eyes and asked her mother, Will Baba be here tonight? You promised. Her mother stroked her damp cheek and said softly, It depends on the moon, sweetheart. Come back, come help me pack food that we will send to Baba. Miriam, Miriam's dad was observing itikaf in the masjid. This is when you stay in the masjid all night long to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And many of you have done this, this Ramadan at our Burlington Masjid. Miriam was so sad. She missed her father, whom she had not seen for the past nine days. Even now, she was not sure when he would be coming back. Mummy would pack food for him in the morning for suhoor and in the evening for iftar. So Miriam's father is spending the whole last ten days of Ramadan in the masjid. We have been doing odd night uh, itikafs, virtual and at the masjid. She asked her mom, "Why, mommy? Why isn't Baba coming home? And uh, what will this? Uh, uh, and what will the moon do?" Um, I miss him so much. Her mother hugged her tightly and said, Your Baba is in the masjid observing itikaf. He will be there for ten nights in the mosque, praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a special time when he is making dua for all of us. Does that make sense? They sat down together and broke their fast with dates and sandwiches. Asad, Mary's, Miriam's big brother, raced outside to see if he could see the new moon. Suddenly there was a clatter. A lot of running and someone stumbling. Then a chubby boy ran up and yelled, Mommy, I saw the moon, said Asad, and he picked up Miriam and swung her around and around. Oh, that's so lovely. Alhamdulillah, Baba will be coming home soon. Sure enough, in an hour or so, the door creaked and Miriam let out a shrill screech. Baba! Her father rushed in and hugged everyone, wishing them a blessed Eid. Once everyone had dinner and settled down, the children wanted to know what itikaf was like. It was the most beautiful ten days, my dears. My brothers and I sat in the mosque all day long, praying and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thought about what we had been doing wrong and asked subhan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us be better Muslims. We thought of what we wished for and made dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings. Mommy came in carrying a, a tray with two glasses of warm milk. All right, children, let's go to sleep. We have to be up bright and early tomorrow for our Eid prayers. Next morning, Baba, Mama... Asad and Miriam dressed up in their new Eid clothes and went off to offer their Eid prayers to the mosque, at the mosque. There the Imam told them about the great significance of Eid and the blessings of Ramadan. He asked everyone to continue their good deeds even after the holy month of Ramadan is over. Then they came back home and Mommy gave them delicious sweet treats they had made the night before. Soon their neighbors and friends came over to wish them a blessed Eid and to have, a f have fun and enjoy. Finally, after Asar prayer, Baba took Asad and Maryam to a, neighborhood, a neighboring hospital where they distributed Eid presents to sick children. Baba, why do we give gifts to the sick children? asked Maryam, feeling a little sad to see the sick children. My dear, Eid is a very special day full of joy. We have so many things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to us. Uh, and so we thank him by giving them to people who are not as well or has, who have less than we do. So on Eid, we remember others as well. On their way back, Miriam saw a little girl who had fallen off her new bike. Miriam yelled, Baba, stop, stop. She rushed out to help the little girl up and said, Oh, poor baby, don't cry. Here, take my bracelet. It's so pretty. It will make you feel better. The girl looked at the pretty bracelet and gave a little giggle and hugged Miriam and ran to her mother. Baba, I feel so happy in my tummy. And everyone started laughing at Miriam's funny remark. So uh, this is a beautiful story about Eid. Um, many of you, inshallah, will experience this tomorrow where you will dress up in your nice new clothes, uh, head to the masjid to pray, um, share some sweet treats. And I do hope that you um, follow Miriam's example here and follow the example of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by uh, sharing um, some of your gifts, some of your food, 
um, some portion uh, of, of what you've set aside for your own family to, to others in the community, visiting the sick, uh, um, giving to the poor. Obviously, we pray, uh, or we, we give sadaqah, the sadaqah uh, for Eid al-Fitr, the zakat al-Eid. Rather, you give um, special money um, so that everyone can enjoy Eid. But in Eid itself as well, you can go and give gifts, um, cheer other people up. Also, I hope you follow the example of the Imam uh, from this story who advised everyone to keep doing the good deeds that you've done in Ramadan throughout the whole year. So if you've fasted a little bit this Ramadan, well, find other days that you can fast. Mondays and Thursdays are customary, and there are three days in the middle of the month that you can try fasting. Um, you've given so freely of your, of your money and your time during Ramadan, uh, and you realize how easy, to, easy it is to give money and give time. So you, I encourage all of you and myself to continue doing that throughout the year. You've read a whole juza, maybe many of you, um, during Ramadan, every day, a whole part of the Quran, or at least many of you try to, to, to read a little bit more, maybe a page. And if you were doing extra Quran, well now it'll be easy for you during the year just to read a page or a few ayahs every day. Um, Allah shows how, how easy it is to do, these, to do these things, these good deeds every day. Um, so I pray um, also that uh, you've gotten in the habit of praying your five daily prayers on time. Many of you have come to the mosque to do tarawih prayers, staying you know, a couple hours every night to do prayers. Compared to that, just um, doing your five daily prayers on time and doing witr at night at home will feel, will feel easy. So I, I pray that you get the blessings of Ramadan throughout the whole entire year, that the good deeds you've, you've practiced this month will continue throughout the whole entire year. And I pray that we'll see you next year, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Eid Mubarak. Assalamu alaikum.